everybody i'm cinnamon cooney archer but and today we're journeying on on our next leg of our mermaid big art quest so this is a freshwater mermaid and she's in a luxurious amazing upstream pond with all kinds of flowers and koi and all the creatures that she takes care for and we've been traveling along getting her done if you check in the description below, if you're just wondering and you're like, what is this? What's a half done painting? What the heck is happening? If you check in that description below, you're gonna go to something called the Big Art Quest. And there you're gonna see all the paintings that we're doing for this year. There are 12 of them. They're very beautiful. They're very involved fantasy theme paintings. We're going through an hour at a time explaining every section and segment of what we're doing so you guys can create these at home because that's the goal. It's like, I'm, me painting it is not the goal. The goal is you painting it. There's a ton of resources there, including extra reference photos and things that you can use as a student to be able to understand how to paint things better, materials, everything that you need. So get familiar yourself with the description. And remember, descriptions below the dots, there's about 50,000 more characters. So you gotta open that up. You gotta open it up and look into it. Otherwise it's like, that's where I hid all the materials. Where'd I hide them? In the description. You gotta open it up. It's a secret power user move. <laughs> so mm. on the mic is my husband, John. Hi guys. He reads your questions and comments and tracks me with cameras and makes sure that I don't get too far off track like I just did here today right now. And pretty much that the show runs smoothly and that somehow we stay on air as long as staying on air is possible. Mm, yeah, well, I, all the buttons are being manned. I have my coffee. Do you have your coffee? Yes. I, did, right. I got my coffee before you got your coffee. I beat you to the coffee punch. All right. Yeah? Oh, yeah. I you was did? like coffee ready. I'm super coffeeed. Can you tell? Yes. I'm doing some deep breaths. <laughs> I'm decoffee. But not because of John. John is a John is wonderful in my life. <laughs> Thank you for telling them that. There's a little disclaimer. <laughs> <laughs> We've been married a long time, so he knows this. He knows I'm just resetting myself. Yeah, I'm I'm fine. I yeah. highly recommend that you do this every once in a while in your painting process. Like the whole of your painting process. Every once in a while, take a minute. There are probably 150 things coming at you every day. And it can be very hard to step out of that life and into your creative practice. So I think we're going to take some reminders in our big art quest to just stop and be present so we can enjoy this time painting. Whether you're painting for health or whether you're painting for hobby or whether you're painting because like you have always dreamed of being an artist, it's important that you step out of regular life and into this space, really relax, really open if you can. So that's what I'm doing for myself. I hope you'll do it for you. And I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna continue refining the pond and the rock and the fish and maybe even start to get into some of her tail because where it goes under the water, there's quite a lot of work for me to do. So I'm gonna have to start blocking that in. Um, I also wanna, just talk a little bit more on the fish with scales and some techniques. We're going to refine some of our water techniques as we're coming closer and maybe come back and sharpen some edges, some lines, some different things, some places to help them pop. So this is going to be a refining and filling in leg. We're going to be about, I don't know, 40 minutes or an hour. And we should finish this feeling like we're starting to really see where the project's going. And I'm going to find one of my tools that I want to use. What is it? Oh, here. They love your hat by the day. Do you? This it's, is a gift from the community. The very nice hat. Gift. The, I like the hat. Gift. See, so it's got my, see. It makes your hair look so, 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 I don't know. It looks so cool like that. The one good thing about making the mistake of using my real name on YouTube is that all the products with initials come in with my initial. Mm. I didn't use a pseudonym, so I get my actual initials, so they feel very. They're very, very mm. personalized. I find the silver lining. <laughs> mm -hmm. you've, got, you've already got your paint out today, mm -hmm. don't you? 
We're all kind of ready to go. Some of it. I've got some of it out. What I put out was my burnt umber, my cad yellow, my burnt sienna, my Indian yellow, my phthalo green, my phthalo blue, my yep, zinc white, and my titanium white. I sometimes test it just to make sure I'm not misspeaking for you guys, but that's how I always know because titanium white is like this and zinc is like that. There we go. It can't even. It's still just like, I'm like... That stuff you used to put on your nose. Wait, was that called zinc too? Hmm, maybe there's a clue there. All right. Huh. This is a number two ruby satin bright. I'm going to start out with this today. I'm going to get it wet, drag off the extra water. And I'm going to start just thinking about some of the areas in my painting that I've been observing and thinking about. And maybe adding a little sharper lines to help them pop. Now, I'm, this is my... Phthalo blue and my cad yellow. I'm making a very light, bright, noticeable green. I put a little zinc on it. I'm going to come to some of my my little lily pads that I had done and make sure that a few of these have a slightly sharp edge to help them be more visible. Soft edges put things out of focus and hard edges put them in focus. So that's that's just me playing with the focusing. Right? And I've got this nice bright value and that helps pull things forward. So sometimes it's good to go through and be like, "Hey, is there anything I want to refine, pop, sharpen, tell a little more story about, get a little more involved in so it's more visible." And don't hit all of them. You just want to hit some of them. You're just talking about things a little bit. You're just Going into things, look for some places that you can pop a little bit of color. Like right here, I'm going to pop a little bit of color here. So when I'm not painting, what I'm doing often is looking at the work, seeing where I feel like it could use a little extra TLC. See me adding the yellow here to create some reflections? Yeah. And I'm doing this little motion that you see because it's very watery. It is a very watery motion. I might get into my uh, blue here. See this right here? I do. And I'm going to come work this, and it's going to do some really gorgeous stuff. I want to. Oh, it makes a shadow. It does. And it's creating um, a beautiful water narrative. So, right now, our water is a little green. It does. It makes it kind of like an underwater. Yeah. And by adding this little bit of color to everything. We're starting to talk about a much cleaner, more welcoming pool. So I'm just adding some of that there. And this is just something that as an artist, you definitely, definitely want to be in the practice of is like, hey, is there something I can do in my painting that I, I wasn't seeing when I was working last time? And I'm now seeing. And so that's just me thinking about those things. We've got to kind of think about these little fishies. I have to agree. There's a there's a there's a comment that made me chuckle. Oh, okay. She 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 looks like how I feel in the morning. Well, she's <laughs> having a moment now. We just know where her <laughs> eyes and face and nose are. She's pre coffee. There's a, a a really great class on portraiture, and the instructor said something I thought was wonderful, which is that you don't see features, you see shadows and hairlines. It's true. He's like, just master the shadows and hairlines, and then you've got people. Because other than that, it's just irrelevant. And I thought that was an interesting way to look at it, but given the skill of the instructor, I would have to say, yeah, probably knows. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is that is their whole kit and caboodle. There were some things about the waterfall that I had improved. So I'm going to take a little bit of my blue and my brown here, and I'm going to make not a chromatic black, but sort of a deeper color. And I want to add some deeper shadows so that the white is popping maybe a little bit better. Does that make sense? Yeah. And if you want to look at that, we have a reference, right? We have a couple references of water, you know, and just you might want to look there at a couple places and be like, did I catch that? So I'm, I'm going to come back at any place I felt like I wasn't quite getting it. Maybe go even a little more brown on this. Um, I'm going to come back and maybe add some more drama and interest. And you may not have this on your painting. That may not be something that was even remotely an issue for you. I'm going to add a little shadow right here. I just think that uh, shadows are hard to come by. And sometimes you got to add them back a little bit, right? 
And if you do too much, you can always come back and bite it out. But this is an important part of painting that sometimes we forget to do, which is the assessing phase and then the refining phase, where we're like, hey, I'm close here, but there are some things that I could do to really, really help some of what I've got going on. I'm just pulling that down, just making sure that these have better shadowing than I had before. And just to always feel like you can go in, think about, refine, especially if it's a piece that you feel strongly about. Like I feel pretty strongly about this piece. I want it to come out good. I want to really be pleased when I look at it on the wall. So coming back and saying, hey, we're close. But there's some things here, some aspects that I felt didn't hit the full intent that I might have had. See, already adding those shadows adds a little, you know, I'm just pulling those in. And, and by using kind of some of my background colors instead of just black, I am, you know, making sure that it feels a little more. I'm going to pull this like this just a bit and then I'm going to come put it back. Because you just want to make sure that everything that you're painting makes you happy. There's really, you're the first person that you please. Everything else is just sort of not as important. I know that sounds selfish, but sometimes art is a selfish biz. It's, you know, I think that a lot of people are really uh, enjoying the experience of, uh, of seeing how the underpainting comes in and it transforms almost, you know, magically from that moment where it's like underpainting, underpainting, whoa, it's a finished waterfall. Yeah, and it, it it's just really about like taking that time and assessing what you might have somewhere. See, now I'm being a little more delicate about some of that splashing. It's funny how your brain goes, no, those are just some lines on a canvas until you add enough of them and it goes, oh, it's a waterfall. It's that pattern recognition. It just takes enough of it for your brain to go, oh, now I understand what it is. Exactly. And, just... and you've just got to give it some, some cues. And I think I like the idea of having, you know, just a couple splashes up here and there, but then coming back and making sure that the, the fall itself is. It's really interesting, that art form of, uh, and this is where that overworking kind of comes in, doesn't it? Well, there's, there's a come in and overwork and then there's a underwork. So it's, yeah, it's like, like finding, but finding that balance of like, when does it convey what you need? And then mm -hmm. how do you stop before you have painted a billion D layers? I think it's like, I watch a lot of other YouTube. Okay. And first of all, I'm going to caveat by saying I am not throwing shade at other artists. That's just not my deal. But I do watch other artists, right? And the way a lot of people watch football, I watch other people paint. Yeah. And uh, sometimes when I'm watching some YouTubers, I will see a moment, especially in the multimedia community, where the piece is so amazing and perfect, but they're still working it. And I'm like shouting at the screen going, stop, no, no, it was there, it was there. <laughs> Don't do it. It was so perfect. Did you see it? And I know that they must see it because I, this happens to all of us. Like, I'm, that's why I'm like, I'm not even throwing shade because we all miss moments in our painting. Wait, where it was wait, like, wait, 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 what are you doing right there? Right there. What was that? I am adding a little shadow. I have my little dark mix and I just want to create some interest in my water. And I felt like my water got real um, kind of one dimensional. Yeah, because what you're doing there is really neat. And you were, I know you, I, sorry to interrupt you, but that's Oh, no, just, that's okay. See, that's a good time to interrupt me. It was like perfect. I just recognize that, you know, sometimes I've got to go back and reevaluate. I'm going to move the picture in picture here. Okay. John is the master. I don't know the about picture that. picture in picture. But I do have a, I do have a uh, broadcaster that allows me to move picture in picture. So that's convenient. And I may come back and I'll, I'll refine some of these, but I just know that I've got to add some interest back in a little bit so that everything has a little more shape and form.
Because we lose that very easily in a painting, don't we? We lose the shape and form very, very easily in a painting. And taking that week, so one of the, yeah, the great benefits of our, the way we're painting right now is we're taking this time between projects so we're taking the time to sit and look at what we've done. Look at what you've done. But you, you are. You're taking a minute to look at what you've done and go, you know, is this exactly where I need it to be? And your brain, your right brain is talking to you all the time, but your left brain is louder and more insistent. It's like the squeaky wheel. And so coming back and... You know, saying, hey, I see it. Is it there yet is a good way to get to that next stage that you might have in your painting. And I'm just making sure that those, so there's two ways that I'm going to make some of these shadows, these shapes in the water, water splashes pop is I'm gonna work the shadows and then I'm gonna come back and work the highlights. And between those two little balances, I'm gonna get where I'm going. I am, I'm gonna get where I'm going. I'm using the zinc right now because it'll let me do uh, more mellow changes. No. Also, it'll let me make some mist up here, which I felt I was missing and probably would have had. I really like that we take a little bit of time between the lessons. I do too. For this project, I think it's so perfect. I think it's so necessary, right? I'll pull some of the zinc down over that shadow, but it's still there. See? See? I always do that Bugsy Seagull thing. See? <laughs> well, I, you know, it's a. Uh, I I remember reading, um, you know, Wolfgang Ritzler. I think his name is. He was the designer of the BMW that I used to drive, right? Mm -hmm. And they when they designed it. I'm popping a little phthalo blue in here. I'm seeing if I like the idea of that pop a color somewhere in the water. I remember them reading about they lived with the car in their offices for like five years before it ever saw the light of day. Yeah. Because they wanted to make sure that it had a um, a, for, a, a look that, that lasted beyond st a, the style of the day. You know, they wanted to transcend popular culture and be a um, beautiful design. And so... Uh, the E38, uh, the 7 Series BMW from, I guess, was the 90 to about 98. Um, I just get remember right reading into my about titanium that. now. So I just kind of blended some little phthalo through there so I could. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just making sure. No, no, I'm, I'm going on about random stuff. <laughs> no, 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 it's okay. I'm doing these little dabs I'm talking about. And see how they're like a hard edge and it's playing with the soft edge? But the idea of spending that extra time is really interesting. It is, isn't it? Oh, I love that right there. That just happened. That's a happy accent. That's what we mean. Well, when you see those things, you know that ah, that that was the that was the piece that makes it feel good. Yeah. That's the bit. Like right there, what you're doing right there, how you're highlighting those little. That's really cool. It is, and it does some beautiful stuff. And so I, I again, I've been staring at this all week. It's been staring at me with her tired face because she looks tired right now, but. For reasons that are pretty reasonable. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's reasonable for her to seem tired at this red hot moment, don't you? Yeah. I, I just really like how that splash looks like it's popping out of the shadow. As it would, right? Yeah. As I, it would. We've been if you're in the Facebook group for the Big Art Quest, we've been doing these um watch parties, which is basically Facebook's uh, digital drive-in. You like going with your friends to a digital drive-in mm -hmm. and you, and I can curate videos that I want you guys to watch and we can all watch them together and chat. And we did an Iris Scott, she's a finger painter, but she's a fine art finger painter, which just means like she finger paints with beautiful materials, very large and does it at a very high level. So <laughs> it's fine art. She just took some extra time and she was talking about her most famous painting where that came from. And that was actually from her taking a day off and observing her dog. And her dog was shaking off water. And that hit the light. And the way it hit the light, it was so bright. It's this. Yeah. And that made me realize, man, that is, that's when I looked over at my painting. I was like, that's what you're missing. <laughs> like it was in trouble. Like it had 
done something and tricked me and then I was like, no, I see it now. So it's just trying to find those little moments. See, I'm just very softly brushing down. It's not that I'm not, I just need a little more um, thought to the fall, I think, is what it was. Oh, I took that too, too light. I want it a little darker at the turn, and then the bright whites are showing on the way down. So I gotta drop that back down again, but that's easy because I can go, I can wipe off, rinse out, actually, come back, fix that, and then get back into my little dabbly dabs that you might want to do. So fun stuff. All right, there we go. Trying to make sure that we've got the feeling of the fall falling. And I'm always, always, always working on things, John will tell you. Like right before this, I was like working on a painting. Design totally lost track of time. <laughs> and then as soon as it's over, I'm going to work on another painting. Actually, I'm going to finish that one. If you want to see what's going on, you can follow me on Twitter. Because <laughs> today is the day I'm posting work in progress on Twitter. We have a whole lot of fun stuff happening in the studio. Yes. There's, there's, uh. I'm just making sure that there's some, there's a little bit of dark up here that we would be seeing. In the perspective, right? Yep. It's just sometimes it's just about catching what would actually be visible versus what wouldn't. And I'm going back and refining that. And that re refinement is really going to be what gets me through. And this little splash is maybe not as bright as some other little splashes because it's in the shadow. There it's, we go. It's a lurking splash. So can you see how putting that shadow back helped that fall fall? How much oh, yeah. you got to help your fall fall? So it's like, would all of this be in reflection? Would I see the, would the water be clear? You know, what would be happening? Coming back and making sure that my splash off has the right uh, dimensionality and fun to it. This is watching me paint today. Hopefully you guys are painting along and some of this is giving you a little hand maybe in an area in your painting. Yeah, I think I'm so. I'm going to get a little more of my titanium white on the tip of my brush and I'm going to just make sure that I've got some little splash offs happening here. Little splash offs, little, little splash offs happening all around. So you can talk about anywhere it's hitting the water, can't you? Oh, yeah. You know, you just get it loaded up on the edge of your brush. This is a, also that the brush is really good. Good brushes make a big difference. But you can paint with anything. People used to hand make their brushes and they still paint in masterpieces. So don't. Don't let the brush be what stops you. It's just when you can, treat yourself. You'll be glad. I that Rembrandt wouldn't have been thankful for like a ruby satin. He would have been like, where has this been all my life? Oh my gosh. I've been doing this other stuff, but I could really go bananas with this. <laughs> That's what I would do with my time traveling. I'd go back and give out art supplies. <laughs> like great masks. Here. Use this red-handled brush. <laughs> <laughs> this is acrylic. <laughs> it will be dry. Think how much art you can make. Here is some pre-stretched canvas. So, yeah, so there we go. I'm just like, I just wanted to pop that and make sure that that had just a little more of the narrative and dimensionality to it that I was hoping for. I'm going to do just a couple of these sparkle reflections in a couple places on the rock and that's because the rock is wet and so would have some I'm going to get into I'm going to do a little mix of my zinc and titanium and I'm going to go ahead and fix the reflections around the rock I felt like they were just too soft it's good to have soft but you got to have some hard 
edges. You'd have a lot happening off of this, wouldn't you? There's the water. Now, I'm not going to take all my soft edges away, right? Like, I've got some great ones, like, right here around this rock. But I might go ahead and talk about some of this stuff around them a little bit. There we go. Oh, fun stuff. How's that? I think that's popping a little bit more. Yeah. My fish, my fish, my funny, funny fish. I need some fish, some fish, some fish, some funny, funny, funny fish. Oh, yes, the fish. So things that are similar between our reference and our fantasy painting is that you can see our fish. Things that are different is our water is much deeper, so we won't see the shadow under the fish or the stones. Mm. Things you might not know. I'm going to put out some fish colors. Let's, uh, let's uh, put out some... Oh. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Cadlite and maybe quinacridone magenta. Let's see how that like goes that for us. screen's a little dim today. What's dim? Mm -hmm. Oh, today. I was like, am I dim? I don't know. I'm oh, trying to be trying. on point and sharp. I'm sorry. I'm letting everybody down. <laughs> Dial some light around. <laughs> <sighs> All right. Waterfall resolved. Let's get some fish in and some water around her. Let's get some fish in. Let's get some fish in. We need some fish. Some fish, 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 fish. So I've got my, I've got lots of examples. Listen, you guys can go out on Google and find other examples of wonderful, fabulous, fantastic little koi fishers. We can. Some of these, like as I change their perspective and I'm thinking about how they might look in the water, I might change how I kind of painted them in loosely. I just wanted to know where they are design-wise and start that journey. So I'm going to take my quinacridone and my cad red light. I'm going to get this sort of darker color. And since green is almost the contrast of that, I'm going to get that in there. It's quinacridone in it, so it's going to do an interesting thing. That's going to be my darker color. And I'm going to start right here. I'm going to talk about this fish. I guess the girl picture in picture isn't as useful here. No. But they have access to what I'm using as a reference. Yeah. I'm just not going to put it up there right now. Now, I'm noticing that I don't want my uh, backward-facing fin. And I want to change the positioning of my tail. And to do that, I'm just going to come back with my watercolor. I'm going to get my phthalo green and my phthalo blue, and I'll mix them together. And I'll add a little burnt umber. And I'm just going to come back and... Change the perspective of this fish. We're going to be doing that on all these little guys, so hang in with me. And I'm kind of blending this interesting color around. And I may do something similar here, like I'm going to maybe pull this fin off, like we wouldn't see that. But I think we're okay a bit on the basic shape. So let's get these two guys out of there. Blocked in a little better. Locked in a little better. So the top of this fish would be uh, much warmer. And by that I mean uh, more towards the yellow-red side of the color spectrum. And to do that, I use my uh, colors that live on that side of the spectrum, like the color wheel. So I'm adding some yellow to my quinacridone cad red light mix. And I think I'm going to come to the top. And first thing I'm going to do is I'm make a very soft little line of a highlight going to be strongest at the top and then it's going to get a little it's going to get a little faint here we're barely going to see it right there just barely and we can give a little bit of it on the fin just a bit now this guy is much more got much more going on so i'm going to take the top half of the fish's body and bring that color in right up to the top line of that tail. That's fun stuff. And I'm gonna, you know, paint out the shape I'm seeing on, on the nose. There it is. Yeah, we're getting some fish shape in there, aren't we? There we go. 
And also there's a bright light on that fin. You can go right back into your quinacridone pad red mix and then pop in a little bit of that green to get that darker color that is the fish under the water. If your brush is overloading, you just wipe off. Come grab this. And doing these guys is really going to help you when you go to paint um, her a little more clearly. Okay. Because there's going to be some similarities between how she's painted and the fishy fishes are painted. There she goes. A okay, little, little barely seam fin here and a little barely seam fin there. Just this little fish in the distance. And you can come and get just a little bit of that, your pad, and I'm going to tap, tap, tap just a couple spots on the top. See how I'm doing? Yeah. So this is going to imply a few things. Oops, too much. And that's okay. That'll happen. Sometimes you'll get too much out and you need a little bit. You can always offload it using the towel brush and back method like I'm doing. <laughs> back and improve the dark shadow that you've got going here and now right here we can have some fun just the cad and the quinacridone and let's imply a stronger bend in that fish by strong strengthening our shadow I'm gonna pull this down around the edge of the face I'm going to add a little bit more thought to that tail. All right. I love doing this kind of uh, painting. I love painting koi. Wow. We thought we gotten a lot done in half an hour. Have we? Yeah. I feel like maybe not, but okay. No, we've gotten like all the waterfalls in, <laughs> and now we're getting some fishies in. A f baby? Okay. <laughs> John's so nice. He's like, it's okay. Well, you look, know, sometimes I panic like I'm not getting enough work done. Well, look, we got all the um the the lily pads in, and the waterfalls are in. And, like, we still have another half hour or so to go. Yeah, we're going to get a lot done. Yeah, it's no, going to be just, a lot I accomplished. I don't know. And... I'm excited. I just don't know why I'm not trying the to. The goal of this um, is that we... You know, really get to enjoy. I'm going to just kind of, again, kind of shape around the fish with my watercolor. Um, that we get to enjoy our process of creating this. So I feel like I overpainted a bit. And what I'm doing is I'm just going back and refining what I've got and trying to catch that curve more the direction that I want it to be. You guys are seeing what I'm doing. That's what I'm doing. So I'll look sometimes at what I'm doing and be like, I don't quite feel you yet. But I want to feel you. I want to feel you so much. That sounds weird. Pet a fish. Like, we are we are not to be pet. They are to be pet, actually. They are pets. So, well, you know, you know, there's that one weird They're fish sure on YouTube pits. that likes to be uh, picked up and jumps out of people's, out of the, the, the handler's hands. No, I did not know that. What? Yeah, there's this. You're there's, lying. No, it's a fish that likes to. I I guess it likes to be thrown. So it swims over to the to the guy. I'm uh, adding a highlight to the top of fish while John's telling you an impossible YouTube story. No, I've uh, added more yellow to my mix, and I'm just making sure that that my head shape there is good. So the fish swims into uh, his or her hands, and then she kind of tosses it up in the air, and it jumps over, the, it flies over there a little bit in the pond, and then falls down, and then it swims right back over to her hands. Really? I'm not even kidding. I was just like... Stop eating fish, people. That is not okay. <laughs> All that does, John, I mean that's another food I can't eat. Don't tell me that, like, if it plays, that I don't want to eat it. <laughs> Well, I don't. I don't think that all That's fish are equally, equally smart. I Maybe think all are... the fish didn't. Yeah, there's probably some Einstein fish. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure there's some. You know. I'm just adding a little talk about a fin there. I'm just thinking about that a bit. 
And I'm going to go ahead and get my, um, maybe my burnt umber and a little of my phthalo blue together. And I'm going to get it on the corner of my brush. And I'm going to imply like a little area that could be an eye here. And just apply some shadow and some stuff that's happening. A little of my yellow on there. So I'm just trying to, and I may have to put my glasses on to, to get it centered the way I need it to. And that's important. It's important to see. Because when you can see, you can do a lot. But when you can't see, you can't do a lot. Sometimes I'm in there, I'm like, you know what my problem is, is I can't see it. Need to see it. And then I can see it. There we go. So I've created a little highlight at the top of that eye. And then very carefully just come back and apply just a smidge. Of, you know, something going on. I'm going to come on the back here and I'm going to try to create a shadow, but I'm going to try to be really chill about it because I don't want to overwhelm the fish. Just something that says there's a little shadow there. Get some little drama. Get your drama going. Get your drama on, man. Now, while this is all having a minute, I'm going to get slightly bigger bright. And I'm going to begin talking about what I feel like is probably going to be her tail. So I'm going to start with my, you're like, what? Oh, yeah, I am. I'm going to start with my quinacridone and my yellow ochre. And I'm going to make this little rose kind of gold. And I'm going to come under her and I'm going to start to paint in the basis of what I believe the most fishy part of her anatomy will be. Now something I am feeling and I did hear in this design, if you're wondering, is I made her tail quite powerful and strong. And the reason for that is, is that I wanted it to be believable that she would be powerful enough to defend her little area of the world mm -hmm. from invaders. Keep it secret, keep it safe. And yes, I'm giving her bum bum. <laughs> but if you've been with me a while, you know I do that with my girls and that's just the thing and that's my style. Well, that's actually not my style. It's just a- They're powerful swimmers. They're powerful swimmers. I believe in glutes. I may not have any, but I believe in them. <laughs> and the reason I'm using this rose color here is because she's going to be kind of a red and white koi pattern. And this is the undertone to the white scales. Going to swing this around. And then once I have that in, I can do a lot to clean up the area, right? Also, once the tail is in, in this area the water is in, I can put in the, uh, wist uh, the wisteria. So this is sometimes about me thinking, well, like, what can I do next? What's going to be the best place to go next? And you'll notice my paint's pretty transparent over the other paint. And that's really the nature of quinacridone and yellow ochre, which are both transparent pigments. But I don't mind. I'll just keep layering them up because I want that value. I want that tone. How are you guys doing today? I want to add some zig to my mix. I think it's pretty good. Everyone's having fun? I, oh, yes. We're, uh, there, there's lots of mermaid talk happening. There's lots of mermaid conversations. Mermaids are awesome, man. Ruth and I were just talking about what, what we think mermaids might eat. My guess is seafood. No, you didn't do that. <laughs> you did. You should have saved that because you owe some people some jokes for St. <gasps> Jude on uh, tomorrow for the panda. I do. You better save some of your good jokes. You guys need to send John good jokes. He owes people. <laughs> <laughs> Ruth said same thing. Save things. for grade school, guys. Save for grade school. 
Like, don't get anyone sent to the principal's office from kindergarten, for goodness sakes. Like, if you have any good grade school recess jokes, please share them with me. Yes. They don't even have to be good. <laughs> good to a seven-year-old is just fine. So you can see how it's like she's almost a salmon color right now. Anybody, anybody else see the salmon nature? But if you look at our... Look at this reference right here. See that? Oh, yeah. You can see those pink values are on these transparent scales. Those are a big deal. All right, so now I'm going to come here. I'm going to take this part all the way out because the tail, I don't think I'm going to have, I think I'm going to have the tail be white. So I won't take it out much past this on the tail. Now, see, I wonder if and I'm mermaids get my and water mer back. Thalo blue, thalo green, and a little bit of the burnt umber. Now, okay, you were saying, babe? Well, uh, you know, I'm a fan of hats. You are a fan of hats. And I know that... This, I know everyone thinks it's me, but it's actually not. It's John. And this mer lady here, she has some headwear on. Yes, she does. She so has I'm, a crown. I'm wondering, you know... Are there like other men's headwear for mermen? Like, do they yes. have some some style and hat stuff? Of course they do. I'm like, gonna come back and repair some of this. I just want to clean up this line. The sun, the sun comes down underwater. You gotta block the sun from your eyes. You maybe I don't know. You worried? I don't know. I like hats, man. <laughs> just makes me wonder. As much as you think I like hats, it's nothing compared to John. I have, I have, well, not as many hats as you, but. But you wear them. I mean, like, he oh, doesn't yeah. leave the house if there's not a hat on. I'll go out with a pony. Don won't leave the house unless there's a hat on. Yeah, I, I own multiple, multi I actually have uh, a rewards multiple purchase card with Goran Brothers. <laughs> so that's how many hats I have. Too many hats. I'm going to get a free hat soon. And I think you have to buy 10 hats to get a free hat. So I'm going to just work this color into what I've already done. And then I'm going to come back, refine anything I've lost, like my lily pads, some of my reflections. And I'll probably, while I'm at it, going to take this down, even though I know I'm going to have a tail here because I just don't want to have to seam this again. So you can see I'm just... Mm. Making sure. Make sure, dudes. <laughs> I'm so glad dude is re-entering the uh, popular vernacular. Oh, well, then I sound less silly than I have sounded in years. I don't know. I'm watching this awesome photography channel that the dude says dude all the time. Good. And I'm like, dude, you're cool, dude. Do you remember the dude? The dude abides. Dude, are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> like before the before before I gave up my sippy sippies, man. I I I I I shared the taste of the dude. In, did you? In, I did. You know, but we're you know. What do you mean by that? That's vague and I'm confused now. Oh, well, he used to drink white Russians exclusively. Okay, I think you need to explain that because he also did some other stuff oh, that's a lot. True. And, um, oh, yeah, that's it very makes true. it sound like, you know, you went to Malibu Reflections. <laughs> <laughs> that's a whole weird Which thing. Which is okay, and if you need to go, you should definitely go. No shame, I'm just saying. No, I was just thinking that before I, you know, because I have Crohn's, and then I gave up alcohol, and so before that I used to drink white Russians because I thought, well... If it's good enough for the dude, it's good enough for me. That is exactly what he said. I was there. We were married. And they were actually pretty tasty. And I was like, huh, this is like nice. And so I would, and then I gave it all up and I was like, no more. Because you can't really, it, it's, it really exacerbates Crohn's. Yes, it does. If you drink. Mm -hmm. And if you did not know that, your doctor should have told you. <laughs> Fire that guy. I cannot believe the doctors that will tell patients that diet does not impact Crohn's. John actually had that said to him once. We yeah. got we got another doctor. <laughs> yeah, we got another doctor. And that was uh, doing much better now. 
So not a medical show. I'm just saying that's what happened. You can see I'm darkening or this area around her, just making sure it's good. I'm still painting pretty loosely. And then as I pull it all together, all of it, it's going to do what it always does, which is kind of go pop, pop, pop. Mm. Pop, pop, pop. Any questions Ooh. so far while I'm having my sippy, sippy? I should put. Ooh, Irlinda pointed out. out something. There is at least one style in male under the water, under the sea. And that's King Triton. And he's got that fly crown. Did somebody share that with you? Yeah, Erlinda. Erlinda, thank you. How are you doing, Erlinda? You doing all right? She seems to be doing pretty good. She's hanging out here in chat. We're kind of Notice out. I can't see through my glasses for the water drops. <laughs> I should pass them off to you. We're live, by the way, folks. In case you didn't notice, this was unrehearsed. Okay. Wait, she... No, you know, off she goes. Oh, I have to clean the glasses. She comes over and I, I have optical cleaning skills. Okay. For my previous not life. Not that I'm a princess or a queen. That is not my vibe. This is your show, baby. But if there's the any fact place is, you get to be is the that John can see better, and so therefore cleans the glasses better. <laughs> I also have all of the camera cleaning lenses. and. I get the socks it. wider. We have trade-offs. There's skill sets in every couple pairing, and my skill set is not getting those glasses clean. And this is one my mom shares, and I bet if you asked John Little, better. he would share that experience with you guys, too. Better? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Bonk. Not only does she have three to four reading glasses sitting on her head at any given time, none of them are clean either. So I feel like I came by this honestly. It's a genetic thing. And I'm still cleaning them because I'm just like, oh, okay, there we go. Is not that I can see myself on the screen because that's far away, but I'm not looking through a splash screen. <laughs> so that's helpful. I'm not impressionistic. I just don't see well. No, just kidding. <laughs> Oh, so, uh, yeah, so what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to continue to sort of shape and I'm going to pick out values. I'm going to start talking about, you know, some highlights, some shadow. I'm going to put the water around her tail. I'm going to finish out these little fish here. I'm going to get the ripples and everything reseam back in and probably um, come around, even if it's a little more than an hour, come around and get these little fish in. So that next class, what we've got is her... And some wisteria. I, I expect that we may need an extra one for her face or we'll go long on one for her face. Yeah. Just so that we're not speeding through that process. Because I know sometimes when the face is smaller, it's harder for you guys to do. Oh, no problem. I'm we so can... glad I got people to come do this project with me. When I started the Big Art Quest, I kept saying to John, I just really want to be able to do fantasy paintings, but I got to get everyone painting faces and I've got to get them doing figures. <laughs> <laughs> Big Art Quest was born. So, um... My need to be a goof has benefited art education on YouTube. Hmm. In some I'm, way, I'm, I hope. You know, this is my favorite thing that we do. The big art quest? The I thought it was YouTube. ATC. Just like broadcasting. Oh. oh, I love ATCs too. That's a, that's, it's a, it's a, I think that's the most, one of the most special things where people get to share art with other people. It's like art pen pals. I know you love it a lot. Which is. It's okay. It's okay to love it a lot. I'm Thank not you. judging. Don't be like, you're touching your husband. Oh, no. Gosh, gosh, so she does you know, give me a hard time because I have a weird interest in art pen pals. <laughs> I guess it's not weird. So we I made show. my mix again with my uh, yellow ochre quinacridone, and I'm just coming here uh, with the zinc white, the top of the bum bum. And see how transparent the zinc is. It's like almost like glazing, isn't it? Almost like glazing. All right, so we're just continuing to work that. There we go. Starting to make some sense now, isn't it? Yeah. I'm trying to get a nice sharp edge on her tail against the water. And get enough paint on her so that when I come to start really putting the paint on her, this under work helps make that feel more valid and real. And I love that there's a bit of a flesh tone quality to the tail, honestly. So that's fun for me. All right, so I come under here.
feel like a shadow will definitely be necessary. I'm just trying to, like if I wanted to, I could come in and just even do a little of the burnt umber right here and then into this. And it's not blending out well, so what I'm gonna do is grab some glaze. You guys know how I love my glazing medium. Just make sure that that is, I want a darker value that's believable that it's not in a bright light. There we go. Isn't that nice? Just pulling that in, deepening up that value. Having a good time. Are you having a good time? I hope so. I love doing this. <laughs> Don't like, I love it. I love it. And if I didn't, that would be so bad. I'm only worried that you we've only got ten minutes left today. Oh, it's okay. Do we only have ten? Well, I mean, like, unless you want to go over, but I mean, like, you know, it's like, we're not like on a hard 10 minutes, but I mean, just generally we try to go over about an hour or so, you know. Yeah. So it's not a hard 10. I'm going to go, guys, until I think we're at a good stopping point. Don't worry. Yeah. So where I have him, her, not him. Her. I don't, actually, I don't know. We haven't had a conversation yet. Um, <laughs> but presenting as a her. Presenting as a her. Um, I'm going to be just trying to darken some of these values down here a little bit. I'm using, like, the green, I might get into my burnt umber. And the reason being is it's under the water. And so therefore will not be as bright right, as the rest of her. And that's what we've got to play with is how we are shading this part right here. And then when we're very close to the deep water, I'm gonna get some green and blue into this. And I'm going to very lightly kind of, I want it to still sort of show, but just brush a little of that. See what I'm doing? So it's like there's definitely, and we're sort of visually disappearing maybe into the water a bit. This will be important later. Good work to do now. I still want to see the tail faintly. I just don't want to see it well or brightly. Let's see how we're doing. That's looking pretty good. She's there, but not there. There, but not there. There, but not there. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm going to get my green and blue again and a bunch more of my burnt umber. I may lose a little fish here and there. I'll put them back, I promise. Got to create some pretty deep color right here. And then we will lighten some of that up. This is some water perspective. And water perspective is always interesting to do, isn't it? Mm-hmm. It's always, always interesting to do. Gonna add another layer. We are gonna be using the green and blue to brighten, but we've gotta get the depth first. Right around this rock. This rock needs some depth. The rock needs depth. Is your rock deep? Are you deep as a rock? I don't know. See, that would be funny, because like as an artist, you'd be like, are you as deep as a rock in a pool? And people would be like, are you insulting me? And you'd be like, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a deep rock. <laughs> no, I'm, not I'm a insulting. deep purple rock. That's right. Or I'm deep purple. Yeah, deep purple rock. You you are a deep purple rock. Are you are you declaring yourself such? Well, deep purple was a rock band. Oh, was it? Yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't know that. Oh. I didn't. That's true. I, I'm more the musical person. I did. Well, we we have very different tastes. I need that to be a little bit more green. We John and I have very different tastes. I'm just coming and adding some of these. Although we appreciate each other's music. Yes. Some of these all important. You see how I do this where I sort of wiggle it to talk about the water? And there's a calligraphy effect in the brush. It really is. It's just like you're adding little surface reflections. It's just like, wow, that, that water's just coming alive. And it, and it just does. And you can just play and play and play and play and play. Not overwork, but play. <laughs> And that's what we're doing. We're just making sure that 
as we pull things forward, as we get it, you know, together as we're going, that the things that need to have a sharp, crisp edge, that's what tells us what's in focus. Certainly that's what my eyes know. And what is kind of blurring far away is out of focus. Now, obviously in painting, I could hyper-focus everything. I could focus to an infinite field, right? But that's an interesting thing when you see artists play with that because when they play with depth in that way, you feel sometimes like you're falling into a painting or you don't know where you are. It really is unnerving. Mm. So it's like, it's not that it's wrong to keep everything in focus. It's just that it's going to create a result. And is that the result that you want? If you're looking to push objects back into your landscape in a traditional sense, you're going to uh, um, desaturate the color and you're going to kind of fuzz them out, make them soft. That's what's happening. I see. Not that that's exciting for everybody the way it is for me. I'm just saying that's what's going on. I think it's exciting. <laughs> I hope so because I love it. All right, back into the brown and blue. I'm going to come around this part of the tail again. Which brush are you using there? I'm still on this uh, number six bright. It was actually when I was using earlier today for a project I was working on. I just haven't put it down. Hmm. <laughs> So I'm going to, I don't mind, I'm going to glaze some of this over my fish because I know I'm putting them right back. Right? Yeah. And I need, need, need to work out some of these water issues. So again, green and blue, more green, but still with some blue and a little zinc. Because I want the water to be beautiful. Don't you want your water to be beautiful? I'm going to come here with a little of that because it's such a gorgeous, gorgeous color. Little blue, little green, little zinc. And everyone's like, why is zinc? This why? This why? Yeah. <laughs> totally worth it. And honestly, I mean, it comes in, you know, different grades. You can get it in a lot of paint lines. I went out and did a did a search when people were like, there is no zinc. And I was like, there's a lot of zinc. It's just knowing where to look. And I would distrust a, a company, even if they had a student paint that had no zinc, man. They need zinc. It's a very strong word. Distrust. So I'm just trying to create the effect of some rippling coming forward and and the water just being beautiful and rich as I'm going. Right here. And yes, we're going to keep rippling that. I might have to uh, move this to the side for a second. Sorry, John. No, you're all right. I'm just deepening the color here. So you can see it's just getting richer and richer. Now, yes, I'm on the ampersand board. And yes, that's kind of unfair. If unfair is having a better, more exciting time with your painting. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want me to have the better, more exciting time with my painting. <laughs> well, too bad, because I'm still going to. <laughs> what I mean by that is that there are, again, you know, I mean... People like stretch their own canvas at one point, right? I got to hold this up here. The reason being is that sometimes when I'm on the side, I can't see my reflections well in my mind's eye and they can get a little lost on me. And I want to just make sure I've got some water movement, but not that it's like way out of hand. Anyways, of course you can use anything, but I have to say just quite honestly, in my opinion, there are certain things I really appreciate having in my studio. And these canvases, not, they're not canvases. These artist boards have become one of them. Mm. And on the days I'm not painting on them, I really notice it. It's not true. that I don't get a painting done. You guys have seen it. I get the painting done. I have more fun on um, the days I get to use it. That's all I'm saying. I will get my fish back, I promise. I just want to make sure I got some water happening here. So we got a lot more of that happening, right? Yeah. 
I think realistic we'll get the water finished and the um, lily pads fixed, and then we'll have to like meet back up. Fixed? But that's still a lot. They didn't see anything wrong to them. Oh yeah, I, I, I painted them out a bit. Oh. And it's gonna bug me, and I'm gonna have to look at it all week. If I fix it now, it won't be like, can I resist fixing them later? Which is usually what I'm going. Like I can't fix this right now. I have it. It's not class. And then I'm like, but it's staring at me. They'll never know. <laughs> and I'm like, sure, they won't know, but then they won't know how to fix it. So that's not the goal. I'm going right over my uh, fish and even into my rock. I'm just trying to make sure that any of the movement I'm putting into my water. And I want you to think about something. Every object in this pond is affecting a wave of motion. Right. So the waves, the energy is probably mostly coming from this waterfall, but of course she's probably got a wave of motion that's going out. And each of these fish could be having a wave of motion that's going out, depending on how close they are to the surface. For sure she is, and this is, and then you have these static objects like the rocks, the shoreline that the waves are going into and bouncing back off of. It's a good time to watch Vsauce. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't know, that's an education channel on YouTube, and they explain things like how waves travel. <laughs> Science. We talk about it here sometimes. Sci you just went Yoda on me. Science. We talk about it. Yes, we do. <laughs> Why is my Yoda, like, from <laughs> Ireland? What's going on today? <laughs> you, what your happened Yoda, there? Your Yoda was like, you have, you're like young Yoda. Like, <laughs> like you have the, the plucky 14-year-old Yoda. <laughs> <laughs> That's about my wisdom level, so okay, <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> I can totally imagine a 14-year-old Yoda. That'd be awesome. <laughs> yeah, I want that show, not young Sheldon. I want 14-year-old Yoda. <laughs> I'm that little little smack-talking green guy going and starting fights. I mean, if I got to watch Han Solo come onto the scene, I definitely would like to see some Yoda. Yeah, because, I mean, talk about an old dude who can probably th throw down in his youth. Oh, we've just seen him as a little spinning green dervishness. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, that is. That's that was cool. <sighs> Digress. We lived long enough to see the computer technology fix the movie we loved when we were a kid. <laughs> Back when it was done with plastic and firecrackers. And then all the adults are like, "Gosh, why is this movie so for kids?" I'm like, "Seriously, dudes, do the math. It was always for kids. Lucas has never hid that." Lucas has never lied to you. He's been truthful. I'm going to pull out some of my green here and a little of my yellow. And I'm going to get some different wonderful values of green to come back and uh, fix my pads. Let's mm. fix our pads, right? Fix them. And sometimes you paint a thing, then you paint the thing out, and then go, oh my gosh, i got to put it back. What happened? <laughs> That's art. Get back into that light green I made earlier. Make that sure that's worked through my brush. It's a little double loaded right now. Sometimes one accidentally double loads a brush. It happens. It happens. I'm adding that zinc white to, to give a like little bright light edge to a couple of these. Helps define their shape. I did not know that. Did no? You, did you know that Yoda was a really good gardener? I did not know that. Why do Why do I not know that? I don't know. He has a green thumb. <gasps> John, you're supposed to be saving it. <laughs> saving it. That's not a panda joke. No, they don't have to be panda jokes. The panda, you're the panda tells the jokes, John. Well, uh, that one was just, that one, we just, you know, that was that, too easy. That's just for big art quest. That's a freebie. Yeah, that was, you know, <laughs> we were just talking about Yoda. and You, you know, had to do it. It was topical. You know. You, right. you can never let a good pun or, you know. I feel like you can. Yes, you can. I know. You can let them see, go by, John. You can let them go by. This is why, is that if you if you love those near you, you'll share the puns. 
it's it's true. Is, were we still trying to sell that story? No. Oh no. It's it's you know those those who know the puns. You will, know your will... mom only lives five minutes away. She <laughs> would love these. <laughs> <laughs> she would be like so happy to see you. She'd definitely go see her <laughs> with all the jokes. Hey guys, load them up. <laughs> I'm fine. I, so you just tell them instead so, instead of my puns. You're highlighting these. Um, uh, I'm trying lily pads. to help the lily pads kind of take a better form, and I'm giving them a little more dimensionality, and I'm. Highlighting them somewhat so that they kind of pop and, you know, that they're happening. They are happening. You got to have them happen. Otherwise, uh, what are you doing? No, really, what are you doing? Skipping stones. Skipping stones. Don't skip stones in here. She, uh, she's teeth. <laughs> She'll be like, hey, don't throw stones in my pond. I love how the new mermaid tails have them be really deadly. Shape of water. That was not safe. Don't mess with that guy. Why would you put him in a tank? Big mistake. Mm. We're just shaping him. And then I'm like, man, I need to, to get some area of that knocked back. So if I do, I just get into my brown and then, you know, come around this side. I'm just trying to work the ellipse, see? There we go. <laughs> Work the ellipse. Work your ellipses. Have you been working your ellipse? No, no, not my elliptical, my lips. So the circle thing that I draw. I have but one really fit muscle, and it's right here. <laughs> <laughs> like Popeye. <laughs> so it's a, actually, I do eat spinach. What am I saying? All right. I feel like we've got this to a pretty good place where we can meet up again and make some more headway. I know I'm not rushing through. But I'm just inclined to take as long as it takes with these so that we get the results that we want. I want you guys to resolve the areas in your painting, evaluate, use those references, get this water up in through here, work your ellipses, work your reflections, sharpen, soften. So back in here, you can soften most of it, but sharpen some, sharpen some. You could sharpen a couple flowers if you wanted to imply that they were in the bright, bright light. You could sharpen a couple of the blues. You know, there's stuff here you can, you know, think about your fists. The fists. I love his little fistle eye. It's my favorite part to, from today is that right there. <laughs> right there. That, my favorite thing I did today, <laughs> all day, is that. <laughs> I hope you have a favorite part too. I hope you're enjoying your art. I'm enjoying mine. Be good to yourselves put the burdens on like i need to take this advice too let me tell you put the burden down whatever it is put it down during your art time so that you have a break and a risk reset in your heart i'm going to see you guys at the easel really soon